All right, AP, the last one, 16.10. You've done pretty phenomenal for asses and bases because usually asses and bases are not uh, AP's favorite topic, but I think you guys have pretty rocked it so far. Um, factors that affect acid strength, okay? You're not going to see much math in here, but we got to look at some trends, okay? So there are two types, so acids that affect, uh, affect strength. You have to remember these two trends called binary acid versus oxy acids. So we first need to do a little rewind into some baby kin knowledge here. Binary acids means that you have two elements. And if you have two elements, you already know one of them is the hydrogen. The other one is the anion. Now that anion right there uh, obviously uh, would be just a non-metal by itself. With an oxy acid, you would obviously have uh, more than two elements. And this is where the polyatomics come in. So you would obviously have your H plus and then your polyatomic with its negative charge of whatever it would be. The hard part is it's remembering the two trends. Okay, which trend does which? So the HX bond strength tends to decrease as the element X increases in size. Okay, so we need Mr. Periodic Table. Okay, so right here, Mr. Periodic Table, we got to do a little remembering of size. Okay, so with size, atomic size, ion size, atomic size, remember the size increased as you went across and decreased as you went down, okay? So it increased as you went across to the left and then increased as you went down the group. Now, because I'm only focusing on the metals, or I'm sorry, I'm only focusing on the non-metals because we're talking about with binary, the X, the H, plus whoever this anion is, and we know that anion's one of these non-metals, and you know we're not even looking at the noble gases. So very small space we're looking at. So with the trend, real quick, the acid strength, so the acid strength decreases as the X ion increases, okay? Acid strength increases down a group. So let's kind of do like a little sketch of our periodic table. So acid strength increases down a group. I'll just put the word acid. Base strength decreases down a group. So acid strength is increasing down a group, but for bases, and we only care about this side over here, base strength increases as it goes up. Now, why am I putting the bases over there? Because remember, base is a metal with hydroxide. So on one side of the periodic table, we care about the base side, and the other side is the acid side. Okay. HX bond polarity, and remember the polarity back in chapter 8, 9, and 11, okay, about the uneven distribution of electrons, and the more uneven it is, the more polar it is, it is important to uh, determine the relative acid strength in any period. So with this one right here, this is the group trend, okay? For this one is the period trend. So we're looking at, if we're doing our sketch of our periodic table, and that's bad sketch, but you've already known that with Rodriguez. The acid strength increases left to right. So our acid, remember this is only the part we care about, our acid strength increases as we go left to right. So look at who's the uh, seven strong acids uh, three of them are halogens. That should make sense to you. The acid strength should be going. And as the electronegativity of X increases, okay? So our acid strength is increasing left to right. Our bases, our base strength would be increasing this way, okay? It says decreasing left to right, but you know Rodriguez always likes to look at it when it's increasing. And this should make sense. You got your group one, you got your group two are your strong bases. It should make sense that it's increasing to the left. So the acid strength, the acid increases as the electronegativity of the ion increases too. Now, what do we remember 
about electronegativity. Well, what was the electronegativity versus, and I'm going to put a little periodic table of electronegativity right here. And I'm only going to focus on the nonmetal side. With electronegativity, it increased as it went across and increased as it went up. Because remember, who's the most electronegative element? It's Mr. Fluorine. Okay. So acid strength increases as the uh, electronegativity of X increases. Now, why this really confuses students, okay, is because you have to look at this trend up here also. And I'm going to do, uh, let's do it in a different color. Let's pick, let's go, I guess, purple. Okay. See this part right here? The acid in a group for acids, the strength increases across and down. The electronegativity increases across and up. And why is this really confusing the students? It's because of this. HF versus HCl versus HBr and HI. Three of these are strong acids. One of them is not. Okay? You have to be focusing on that trend right there because as acid strength increases, yes, the halogens are most strong acids, but the acid strength increases as you go down. These are your strong acids because you got chlorine sitting here, bromine sitting here, iodine sitting here. HF is a very weak acid, okay? Actually, I don't even want to say very weak acid. He's a weak acid, but he's got the potential to become a strong. The problem is it's that Ka value. And if I look at that Ka value for HF, it's not too small. I mean, look, to the negative 4, it's not too bad. So he's definitely a weak acid, but actually I don't want to say the word very. He's just a weak acid, has that potential to be a strong acid, but it's that thing right here, the electronegativity value of that X is making it more harder to get to that strong acid phase. So that's the part that confuses students. It's this electronegativity because it's pointing to fluorine, and fluorine should be the most acidic according to that trend. But it's talking about acid strength increases left to right. You gotta remember that this trend is the period trend, okay? This part right here, this X, we're only focused on that part of the electronegativity. We're not focused on that part of the electronegativity. So you have to remember, this is called a group trend versus a period trend, okay? So if I asked you between HCl, HBr, and HI, who would be the strongest acid between those three? Well, in a period trend, it increases as electronegativity increases. But this right here, looking at these, this is a group trend. So if I put CL and BR and I, if I put them stacked up on top of each other, what do I notice about acid strength? Okay, and acid strength increases as it goes down. So this would be the most strong acid. This would be, I guess, the least. If you want to say, uh, I don't say the less, but we would say out of all the strong acids in this group, I would say he'd be the least strong acid in the group because the acid strength goes across. So one more time, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to be very careful with binary. Between the two ones, binary and oxy, binaries always screw students up, okay? It's because you're trying to mix these two trends together and they're different, okay? So for acid strength increases as it goes across, for the group, it increases as it goes down. So when you're using this part right here, that's when he comes into it, okay? So if I was comparing like an acid of, I'm trying to think of um, some acids that would go across. Um, let me see. Okay, so if I was comparing, so this is our period trend. If I was comparing like H2S, sulfur and the element sitting right next to him on the periodic table. So if you look at your periodic table right here, if I was going to compare S versus P versus like Cl, okay, well we already know H3P and HCl with that phosphorus and sulfur and chlorine. I mean, hello, we already know HCl is going to be the strongest acid, okay? 
But why these two? What if we're going to compare these two? The phosphorus versus the sulfur. Well, according to the trend, what would you tell AP? Well, H2S, and I'm going to get rid of this one since we already know HCl is the stronger one. Uh, H2S would be the stronger weak acid uh, due to acid strength increases as uh, the electronegativity of the anion, this is how you're going to word it, the anion, because we're talking about the negative, the anion increases. So, this is the next sentence though. Since uh, sulfur um, is more electronegative than phosphorus, H2S is more acidic than that H3P, okay? So one more time, ladies and gentlemen, you have to be very careful which two are you comparing. Are you comparing two nonmetals in the same group or two nonmetals in the same period? Okay, so group trend versus period trend always confuses students tons. It's the oxy acids that's much easier. Okay, definitely much easier. So here's the two rules. For an oxy acid, obviously it has to contain oxygen. Okay. Oxygen or acids that contain OH groups are often additional oxygen atoms that are bonded to the central atom are called oxy acids. All oxy acids have a general formula of the Y being the nonmetal, the O, and then obviously the H. You've seen it more like this. Okay, but sometimes AP would do something like CLOH. I don't know why they would do something freaky like that. I've even seen them write it more common like this. These are usually the two common ways that AP does it, okay? And I don't know why. I wish they would stick to the normal way, but you know it's AP. So what is the first rule for an oxy acid? For oxy acids with the same number of the H and the O, okay? So see right there, H and O, H and O, H and O. And the same number of oxygen atoms has to have the same, okay? Then that means it's all about looking at the difference of the central atom, okay? So if they have the same H's and O's and the same number of oxygen, the acid strength increases with increasing electronegativity of the central atom. Okay, so if I look at the differences between these, and if I look at them where they're sitting on the periodic table, I don't care about the H and the O because they're all the same. So the H's and the O's, same number of them. So that means we need to focus on the central atom and focus on its electronegativity. Well, if you look at where these three are sitting, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, and I know electronegativity increases as I go up the group, okay? So that's why HClO, even though these are all weak acids, that HClO is stronger than the other two, okay? And how would you word it? You word it exactly like this rule, okay? So first, all uh, three acids, here's your explanation, all three acids have the same number of H's, and O's, okay? And then you would point out the central atom. However, uh, the central atom for chlorine is more electronegative than Br and iodine. So therefore, HClO is more acidic than the other two, okay? Uh, so therefore, HClO is more acidic than the other two. 
AP has a rule, and I've said it before, you have to talk about every chemical in your essay. So then HBRO and HIO, okay? There's one more thing you need to mention at the beginning of these. All three acids are, and I'm going to put it right here, are not only oxy acids, and then you put it in there. If you were doing your essay up here, you would be talking about how they're both binary acids. That is very key that you're bringing in that comparison right there. So uh, H2S, so first over here, and this, uh, you, probably your first sentence, I would say first, both acids are binary acids, and then start your essay, okay? This one, all three acids are oxy acids and have the same number of H's and O's. So therefore, it's based off of that central atom, okay? The rule that students usually do the best on is when the oxygen, uh, the number of oxygens differ, but the central atom is the same. You can't be changing both rules. You can't be like putting like, um, for the first rule, you can't be having one of these with like two oxygens and the central atoms are different. No, no, no. You cannot take two rules and try to figure out both of them. That's a nightmare. And AP doesn't do that. You either have a different central atom or you have different number of oxygens. So right here, what if you had the same central atom? So acid strength, very simply, acid strength increases as the number of oxygens increase. Very simple rule, and students do very well with this rule, okay? So the more oxygens versus the least. And notice all of these have chlorine, 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 chlorine. I can't just be bringing in like bromine or iodine into this. Can't work like that. So chlorine, 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 okay? So first with your essay, you would be mentioning how all acids are oxy acids and have, mention what they all have in common, uh, and, all, and have all the same central atom, okay? Now you hit them with the difference, okay? HClO4 is a stronger acid and ladies and gentlemen, I better not hear you say that HClO4 is a strong acid, therefore he wins. HClO3 is also a strong acid. These two technically are strong acids, and those two are weak, okay? That doesn't mean that's the end of the story. Is a stronger acid compared to, and I know it's going to be tedious writing them all, but we do have to write them. Since... Uh, HClO4 contains more oxygen atoms, okay? Since HClO4 contains more oxygen atoms, okay? So all acids, right in the beginning, uh, are oxy acids and have all the same central atom. HClO4 is a stronger acid compared to the other three since, that probably looks like the word same to you, since, so I was trying to cram that in there, since HClO4 contains more oxygen atoms, okay? And you can even say oxygen uh, acid strength increases uh, with more oxygen atoms, that's fine. You guys are much better, I'm doing this on the fly, uh, you guys are much better thinking with your thought process of getting your sentences in the way it needs to be but definitely that is the trend you got to be very careful when you say that because ap doesn't want to hear about trends they want you to explain the trends so that's why i didn't in include it as of right now but that's something that would definitely uh be something good acid strength increases as the number of oxygen atoms increase and you can even put that as part right here i probably even state it right there and then start explaining so that's kind of like my notes Remember, that still counts as explaining. You just can't leave it with that circle says. You can't just like leave that and be done. That's a trend. That's not explaining the trend. So let's do a couple, okay? Indicate which compound that leads to a more acidic. So first, 
you got to look at is it a group trend or is it a period trend okay for binary and if it's an oxy acid then you got to look at central atom versus oxygens okay so if i have hbr versus hf okay and i see right there i'm going to make myself a note that is a binary acid so with binary acids i want to focus on the br and the f and i know according to my periodic table i got fluorine that sits right here and i got bromine that sits down here because mr chlorine's in the middle we don't care about mr chlorine so i'm looking at a group trend and i'm just making notes i'm not even explaining anything yet okay i'm looking at a group trend and what's the group trend okay acid strength increases down a group okay and why is it increase as it goes down a group because it talks about right there because the size of the ion is increasing okay so my hbr he's definitely going to win is a stronger acid then uh, HF and what are you going to compare this to due to the BR minus uh, how do I word it? Um, the BR minus uh, is greater than in size is greater in size than F minus okay I don't want to mention as I go down the group, the acid trend uh, increases. If you want to put that as your first sentence, that's fine. But it cannot be the end of it. So that acid strength uh, increases uh, down the group. Okay, you want to, that's fine. But that's how I figured it out. I wouldn't even go there because AP cringes when they see those trends. Okay, but I'm just showing you how we figured it out. The acid strength increases down the group, but that's what I would only be writing. We just looked at this one right above. Obviously, our H2S was the one that was going to win because we were looking at a period trend for binary. Okay, and then here comes my oxy acids. So my oxy acids versus these two, and I know you're seeing one of them. You're like, hmm, that HNO3, he's pretty famous. He's pretty familiar strongest acid out there that can't be your explanation okay so just like what you said right up here so both are oxy acids okay even though we know he's going to win uh both are oxy acids and have the same number of i'm sorry the same central atom same central atom um, but differ in the number of oxygen atoms you see I kind of like reworded it from like the one that I did up there and then I hit him with HNO3 is a stronger acid than HNO2 uh, due to HNO3 contains more oxygen atom. Done. I already mentioned the other chemical. He ain't going to win, but that HNO3 is stronger acid than HNO2 due to the acid containing more oxygens. Done. I don't even need to state the trend. Okay. And the last one, same oxygen, but different central atom. So even though it's still an oxy acid, uh, this is now going to be where we need to look at uh, electronegativity. Okay. So first with our SA, as like we did uh, with this one right here, they all have the same number of H's and O's. Okay. So both acids have the same number of H's and O's, uh, but differ in the central atom. Okay, so back to our trends with oxy acids, if they have the same 
we're looking for acid strength increases with electronegativity of that central atom. So I'm looking at Mr. Parrick's table between sulfur and selenium. And between sulfur versus selenium, so sulfur and selenium, I know that electronegativity increases as I go up. So I know that sulfur, he's going to win. Okay, so if you want to bring it in, um, uh, let's see, H2SO3 is a stronger acid than H2SEO3 due to the central atom, and I, even, I would even say, put in parentheses, sulfur, uh, being more electronegative. And I don't mind, ladies and gentlemen, in your notes, you put EN for electronegativity, but in an essay, you can abbreviate that. Being more electronegative than, um, who was the other one? Uh, then SE. So there's a stronger acid than that due to the central atom S being more electronegative than S. Do you see how you're kind of mentioning a little bit of the trend, but you're not just coming out saying, Stronger acid, more electronegative, he wins. Okay, so it's all about how you word it. And this is where you and practicing is going to be very helpful. So this part, and I don't know why, at the very end of the chapter, is usually the part where students struggle. It's the explaining of these binary versus oxyacids. But I know anything that has taught me this year with COVID, ladies and gentlemen,